The Eastern Caribbean islands stretch like an emerald chain, linking North America to South America. Known for their natural beauty and warmth, both environmental and cultural, people often wonder how these island gems were formed. We now know that many Eastern Caribbean islands were built from volcanic activity, and islands, for example Montserrat, Dominica and St. Vincent, continue to have live volcanoes. Residents of volcanic islands always live with the risk of eruption. Formation of a volcanic Caribbean island In order to live safely with this dangerous natural force, it is important to understand how a volcano works. The surface of the earth is a thin layer of solid rock called the crust, which floats on a much thicker layer of molten rock called the mantle. The crust is broken into several large slabs called plates. In the Caribbean, where the North American plate collides and descends beneath the Caribbean plate, the descending crust melts and the buoyant magma makes its way upwards to the surface, where it builds up into a volcano. An eruption experience, Montserrat's Soufriere Hills Volcano. The Soufriere Hills Volcano in Montserrat is an example of a currently active Caribbean volcano. It is located in the south of the island and is characterized by a cluster of domes, which are basically huge piles of volcanic lava. The slopes of the Soufriere Hills Volcano are built from deposits created by explosions and dome collapses. Residents were living in their lush mountainous home as they had for centuries with scarcely a thought to the apparently quiet Soufriere Hills volcano until suddenly, in 1995, a new vent opened in the mountains. Over the next few months, Montserratians would come to learn a completely new reality as those peaceful mountains unveiled an active volcano. Volcanic ash would fall regularly, settling all over the landscape. But that was only the beginning of the social and landscape change. Montserrat's population of 11,000 began to decline rapidly as people left the island. Meanwhile, a dome began to grow, and as it grew larger within the crater, the threat to life and property escalated. It was soon necessary to evacuate all the villages near the volcano and the capital of the island, Plymouth. The evacuation was accompanied by enormous economic and social disturbance. At present, the Soufriere Hills volcano has reclaimed half of the island, which is now inaccessible or buried by volcanic debris. It also claimed 19 lives. Montserrat has changed drastically, with new development taking place exclusively in the north of the island. The population has decreased to roughly 5,000 residents, who bravely face the road to full recovery. The Hazards of Eastern Caribbean Volcanoes Usually, we think of volcanoes producing red and fluid lava like Hawaiian volcanoes. But Caribbean volcanoes are different and usually produce thick, viscous lava. Because of its viscosity, this type of lava does not travel very far from the vent, but as seen in Montserrat, piles up into gigantic lava domes, creating a number of dangers, including one of the most deadly, pyroclastic flows and surges. When a dome grows so large that it becomes unstable and collapses, or when there is a large explosion, a pyroclastic flow may be generated. This is a fast-moving avalanche of hot ash and rock fragments in a turbulent gas cloud, most likely exceeding 600 degrees Celsius, which will travel down valleys at speeds that can exceed 100 miles per hour, causing total devastation of the areas over which they flow. The finer grain portion of the flow is called a pyroclastic surge, and it can climb terrain such as ridges and hills, taking people by surprise. It is almost impossible to predict the moment when a pyroclastic flow will occur. Therefore, to survive, it is necessary to evacuate areas threatened by pyroclastic flows before they occur. Respond immediately to evacuation orders. Another hazard typical of Caribbean volcanoes is that of explosions, which, in addition to pyroclastic flows, can generate ballistic projectiles and ashfall. When the volcano's vent becomes blocked, gas pressurizes in the upper plumbing system until an explosion occurs. A great column of debris is ejected high into the atmosphere. Large blocks and bombs travel like cannonballs and usually land within one mile of the vent, but they can travel further during stronger explosions. Ballistic projectiles are heavy and fall at incredible speed. Upon impact, they can smash buildings and other infrastructure into pieces. Anyone within range of these falling rocks is in extreme danger. In order to survive an explosion, stay out of the range of ballistic projectiles and out of their path. Again, it is necessary to respond immediately to evacuation orders. During an explosive event, a great volume of volcanic ash is also ejected. These fine fragments of rock, 
up to about 2 mm in diameter, are forced upwards into the eruption column before settling out downwind. When volcanic ash falls, it blankets the entire landscape. It may even be carried to neighbouring islands by prevailing winds. During the 1979 eruption of La Soufrière in St Vincent, ash was carried as far as Barbados. Near to the eruption vent, the thickness of the ash deposits may be enough to collapse buildings and destroy vegetation, especially if there is rainfall. In order to stay safe during ashfall, do not drive unless absolutely necessary, as dust and darkness will obstruct vision, causing accidents. Slippery wet ash also makes driving conditions treacherous. Carefully protect food and water for human and animal consumption from contamination by ash. Protect your property by safely cleaning ash from your roof and by covering equipment. Ash can cause breathing difficulties, so remain indoors during ashfall or cover one's mouth and nose with an ash mask or damp cloth when outdoors. There is another type of hazard to be aware of during eruption of the Eastern Caribbean volcano, lars or mud flows. When it rains heavily, loose volcanic debris may mix with water to create a dense fluid rock mixture called a lar or mud flow. Lars act like wet concrete as they rush through valleys around the volcano, killing and destroying almost everything in their path. The threat from lars may last for years after an eruption has ended. Do not attempt to cross valleys around the volcano, which are known to produce lars, either by foot or in a vehicle. To avoid being swept away by a lar, know where they might occur. Avoid these valleys at all costs, especially during heavy rainfall. The Monitoring of Eastern Caribbean Volcanoes Clearly, the destructive power of the Eastern Caribbean volcano is not something to be taken lightly, even when it appears to be quiet. In 1902, the entire unsuspecting population of Saint-Pierre in Martinique was killed when Montpellier erupted. Similarly, an estimated 1,500 lost their lives in St. Vincent when the volcano La Soufrière erupted just hours earlier. This scale of fatalities need not happen today. All of the volcanoes in the English-speaking Eastern Caribbean are monitored by the UWI Seismic Research Centre, or SRC, based in Trinidad. The islands of the French territories are monitored by l'Institut de Physique du Globe de Paris. Volcanic eruptions in the Caribbean are usually preceded by a number of shallow earthquakes called swarms. Seismic signals recorded by monitoring stations positioned on the volcanoes are digitally transmitted to the SRC and IPGP, where scientists look for pattern variations that might indicate an impending eruption. Scientists also measure ground deformation and analyze gas and water samples around the volcanoes. There is full interchange of data between the SRC, IPGP, and Montserrat Volcano Observatory, MVO. La Soufrière in the north of St. Vincent is one of the most active volcanoes in the region, having recently erupted in 1979. It is carefully monitored by the SRC using seven seismic stations. Dominica has nine known live volcanoes, more than any other island in the Caribbean, which are monitored through 13 seismic stations. In the past decade, there have been earthquake swarms at the Monodiable, Mont Pape, and Mont Anglais volcanoes, as well as small steam eruptions in the Valley of Desolation. These are reminders that although Dominica's volcanoes have not erupted for a long time, they are still dangerous and can erupt. Risk management of Eastern Caribbean volcanoes. But is the island prepared for the next eruption? This question is constantly asked of national disaster management agencies, such as the National Emergency Management Organization, NEMO, in St. Vincent, and the Office of Disaster Management, ODM, in Dominica. These agencies work closely with many stakeholders to protect the public from volcanic hazards. The role of local disaster management organizations is to use the information provided by the SRC to develop appropriate emergency strategies and then execute those strategies. They are responsible for coordinating the preparation of hazard and risk assessments, developing and maintaining contingency plans, warning and educating the public, managing crisis response and ordering evacuation. During times of crisis, these agencies can request support from the Caribbean Disaster Emergency Management Agency, SEDEMA, to coordinate an effective disaster response. The Red Cross movement and especially the Red Cross National Societies support the disaster management agencies by working with the communities before, during and after the crisis. They provide public awareness campaigns, draw contingency plans for communities and schools, and mobilize teams and funding to assist the affected population with shelters, healthcare, food and other basic needs. Getting ready for the next eruption. 
Local disaster management agencies study hazard maps prepared by the SRC, which show the different hazard levels across the island, to create and test efficient contingency and evacuation plans. Sometimes, as in Dominica, the contingency plan identifies a different color for each level of alert. When the alert level changes, disaster management agencies notify the public. A key aspect of their role is therefore also public education. One must know and trust official channels of information. Understand that volcanic eruptions may occur within a short time frame, and while false alarms will sometimes happen, one must always respond immediately to evacuation orders. Are you prepared? As systems are prepared for the next volcanic eruption, each individual has a role to play. The first step is to know where to find accurate information. The official sources of information about volcanic activity are the Disaster Management Organization in your island and the SRC. Next, get to know the volcanic hazard zone of your area. Know where you live and work in relation to the nearest volcano and the hazards which are likely to impact your area. It is also helpful to be familiar with the volcano alert level system in your country. Evacuation will be ordered at the highest level of alert, so get to know what level is represented by each color and what actions are expected at each level. Your local Red Cross or Disaster Management Agency can help with this. Get to know your community contingency plan for volcanic crisis. With this background knowledge in mind, create a family volcano disaster plan and put together an emergency kit which may include a battery-operated radio, flashlight, ash masks, medication, water filters, disinfection pills, and other essential supplies. Make sure every member of your family knows and understands the family volcano disaster plan. As part of your family's plan, talk to relatives or friends in the safe zone to arrange temporary accommodation in advance of any crisis. By being prepared, you can protect yourself and your loved ones when the volcano near you erupts again.